I'm just going to read a quick statement on behalf of the Greenville Police Department and then we will open it up to questions for Chief Holtzman and Mayor Thomas here. It is with great sadness that we report to you the death of Dave Mira. As many of you know, yesterday Greenville Police responded to the 200 block of Pinewood Road for an apparent suicide. When officers arrived, they found Mr. Mira sitting in a truck with an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. He had been visiting friends in the area a short time before the incident. Dave was an iconic figure here in Greenville and around the world. A tremendous athlete, he was integral in putting Greenville on the map when it came to extreme sports. Many who knew him have, have described him as a generous, loving man who knew no strangers. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all who knew and loved him, especially to his wife, Lauren, and to his two beautiful young daughters. In times like this, it's difficult to know what to say. Many of you standing before us today are probably asking the question, why? We can assure you Dave's loved ones are also asking themselves this question today. That is not a question we will be answering. The truth is, we may never know why. Suicide is a personal matter and we intend to keep it that way. It's clear Dave struggled with internal demons, tragically, to the point where he chose to take his own life. It is our job now not just as a law enforcement agency, but as a community to provide the support and resources necessary to help his family and friends get through this. Yesterday's news highlights the need for vigilance and intervention against the tragedy of suicide. If anything good comes out of this tragedy, we hope someone who is watching today will reach out to a friend in need. We hope someone who is watching today realizes that they are not alone. Thank you, we'll open up to questions. Well, I do want to say that, um, you know, Dave Mira is more than just a, a sports figure or someone that was recognized across the world for his gifts. Uh, he's a loving member of this community, and that remains. And I don't think there's a single person here that hasn't met him or uh, experienced what a warm and humble guy he is. And um, for me, it was just prophetic to uh, yesterday at around 1.30 to actually have a 20 minute conversation with Dave Mira and to see the, the life in his eyes and talking about some exciting things that he wanted to do here in Greenville with kids across Eastern North Carolina. You're never prepared for these, this type of news, uh, but if anything, we've got to find something good out of this result and hopefully something that we can save some lives across this community. Um, but it's a, you know, it's a very difficult day. I think a lot are still trying to process what has happened. Um, but this is a story I think that's going to continue to unfold as we go. And I want to thank the, the media and I want to thank the Greenville Police and everyone involved for, for uh, uh, the way they've handled this and working with the family and everyone and, and uh, putting their best foot forward and showing what Greenville and Eastern North Carolina is all about. But um, we love you, Dave Mira. We're going to miss you. And um, your legacy is going to live on this community far beyond. Thank you. Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess uh, from a law enforcement standpoint, the question is, have the facts of the case changed? And the answer is no. Uh, everything we've reported yesterday is still consistent. I can add a couple of bullet points to that, which will be that, first of all, that uh, when the officers got on the scene, uh, it was apparent that he had died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The medical examiner that came to the scene was a Dr. Lopez uh, from the medical examiner's office, uh, and their comments were that everything appeared to be consistent with the self-inflicted gunshot wound. Uh, he was seated in his own truck and it was his weapon that, that was used in this. So, um, you know, it, it is very is very tragic for the community and for a family to go through this. I would add that uh, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is 1-800-273-TALK. We encourage people to, to call that line. You can call 911 if you're in trouble. Our department handles hundreds of these calls every year. Uh, in cases where we go out, we respond to people where they're in crisis and we transport them to the, to the hospital for, for help. That's what we do, we're here for that. And uh, we encourage people to call and, uh, and family members to call and, uh, and get, us, get us involved as early as possible. We'll take any questions that you have. Chief, I uh, have to ask, is there any way possible that this could have been an accident while he was in the car and he was handling the gun? Any possible way? At, at this point, no. There's absolutely nothing that would lead us to believe that there's an accident. Um, there were, uh, the detectives are conducted interviews at the scene with several individuals, uh, family members, and uh, really everything in this case just points to a suicide. Chief, was there a suicide note? 
We don't have that, no. Mayor Thomas, can you talk a little bit about uh, the conversation you had with Dave uh, yesterday, if you don't mind? And let me just clear that. There was no, no there were no suicide notes left. Okay. No. okay. Well, you know, it's a, a normal conversation you've had with Dave. Dave, again, is uh, someone you see around the community all the time and always takes takes his time to talk with anyone from whether it's a little kid on the corner or someone that he knows and uh, is involved with and um, you know it was just, just the normal Dave conversation a guy with energy and excitement and no indication and that's what always you you think in the back of your mind if you could have seen something any little detail that would have just said you know hey wait a minute um, you know how's it going how are things going but I it was a good you know just a normal conversation about things that he wanted to do going forward with his life that's why this is tough to process, and, and I will say this, um, you know, this is a, a young man, I'll call him a young man in his early 40s, um, that had a pretty rugged sports career and took a lot of injuries in his career. And you have to give pause and think and wonder, just as we hear about in uh, brain trauma and football and other sports and activities, whether that played a factor. I don't know that that's the case, but, um, actions on impulse is it really it really gives pause to think about a, a one who put his life out there and his body out there so many, for so many uh, so many years if uh, that's something that I would I hope we're able to to solve that mystery like Junior Seau and so many others in the past that we can learn from this um, and uh, we give our bodies for glory so many times these athletes and, and when they get to this part of their career um, hopefully there, some of this will be something we can solve at some point I think it's way too early. I think everyone is still trying to process the loss of just a, a just a such a such a figure in the, in the not just. So you got to understand the context here. Around the world, you knew this guy who was a sports figure, but he was just a dad in this community. He was just a friend to so many in this community. And we're still processing that. And um, as a friend, I'm still processing it to be honest. Mayor Roberts, he was so instrumental. How is this a loss for Greenville as a whole? Well, the, the thing, the, the, the attribute about David, which is so special, is that people gravitated to him uh, from a young age to an old age, and, and he was someone that was at ease in any environment talking with so many people. And we talk about Sports Town USA, you know, we talk about the JC Park and the skate parks, so many of these things that we want to continue to do. and. Um, whether Dave is here or not, I think he is going to help drive some wonderful things that are going to get kids in, involved in some, you know, some structured things here that are going to be wonderful in their lives. But he's going to be missed. But I think the main thing is what he stands for is not going anywhere. Um, he's someone that's going to drive some wonderful things here and uh, across this community. And Alan, I know you all are very close friends. Can you just talk about the friendship and also? One of the memories that you will always cherish about Dave. Well, there, look, I can only count myself as one of many, many friends that he has across the community, and many, you know, more than me. Uh, he's the guy that we always joke would be the first one to give someone a ride somewhere if they needed it. Somebody would call him at 11 o'clock, and he's the first guy to go do it. Uh, always willing to help someone, and you know, and talk about, you know, where are you going? What have you got happening in life? What, what's, you know, what's it all about for you? But uh, all I can say is that. Uh, touched a lot of lives in this community and he reached out to me and said I want to do more we talked about this back in November and we had plans this spring to move forward with some projects about he said there's a lot of young kids across eastern North Carolina you know who I like to get involved in cycling and other sports and maybe we're going to build a venue here in Greenville so uh, just just a guy who um, was larger than life in so many ways and touched this community do you think we'll continue I think first things first, we, we need to honor, honor him and we need to learn from this situation. And um, I'm sure that this is going to bring a lot of people together, uh, not just in Greenville, but all over. Um, his impact cannot be understated on so many levels. And we, we're still processing and going through what has to be done here as a community. 
Uh, but at the end of the day, his legacy is definitely going to live, live on here tremendously. And Chief, if I may ask a question. Sure. Um, yesterday, he was at a friend's party. Do you, was his wife also at that party? Uh, he was by himself. He was by himself yesterday when, we, when he was visiting a friend. And those friends, did they say or indicate that there have been issues or maybe even an argument or something that was upsetting before he left? No, it was actually just as much a shock to them as it was to uh, Mayor Thomas. Uh, they, they were just making plans, I think, to go out again and uh, went out to his vehicle and then they found him. So it was really kind of caught them off guard. So uh, it really just, it was a very unusual event for them as well. You said it was his weapon, but what type of weapon? Well, we're not going to release the, the actual, we're just call it, we're going to call it a handgun uh, at this point. And, uh, you know, as far as, uh, the, the question regarding the, uh, the, the brain injury, you know, that's something for the, the medical side of things. From a legal side of things, you know, the cause of death is apparent. It's, it's a suicide. Uh, the reasons that led up to that are the good questions to ask. Uh, right. But from a, from a legal standpoint, uh, the medical examiner's office will be doing a toxicology screen on this. But as far as any further examination, that will have to be between the family and the, uh, the medical examiner. I don't have any specific statements of that, but I think uh, that uh, it was apparent that he had been struggling in, in some areas like that, but I don't have any specific statements from friends or family. That, that again, gets back to my earlier statement that based on all of our interviews, it really is consistent with a suicide. Has the family put any <clears throat> word out yet about services, uh, funeral arrangements, you got anything? No, they're still in the process of making those arrangements, so when we learn more, we'll certainly let you all know. Well, thank you, everyone. I appreciate you coming in today. I know this means a lot to the community. It's not one of the things that you typically see for the police department doing press releases on, but I think these, it, it's such a, uh, an important time to, to just bring up the fact that you can call that National Suicide Prevention Hotline and, uh, and reach out for help when you need help or when a family member needs help. I think that's the importance of us doing this press conference in addition to help uh, begin to give some closure to the family and to the community. Thank you.